Hey, right. this is Rich. I'm now recording. And this is Nick, and I am now recording. And then let's audio sync on the clap here. Okay. Uh, we'll count down from three and then clap, all right? Got it. All right. One, two, three. Medically speaking, clap sync just didn't sound good at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just same. Uh, yeah, I, uh, that's what happens. You run a risk when you're uh, running a podcast for a long time. You you, you got to watch out for the clap uh, sync. Got to make sure you and everyone you know has the clap sync. Mm-hmm. You yeah. got to make calls to people you've recorded with before. No one's safe from the clap. Right. No one's safe. I am right. so sorry, but uh, you <laughs> you have the mic clap. Damn it, not again. <laughs> Wait, did you get the mic clap or get the clap from Mike? Mm-hmm. Well, Mike is the one that notoriously spreads it around. Ah. I believe that's what uh, is the double irony there. Yeah. And welcome to Netflix and Kill, our fish fry edition, I guess. I mean, um, I thought we were just doing movie monsters at this point. Well, yeah, well, it was supposed to be movie monsters, but then it's, you know, it was going to be June Prune, and you know how I love a, a rhyme and or pun. You hate and, puns, actually, hmm? unless you're making them. No, 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 that, the, that's the rule of puns, is that you hate all puns that you have not made, but when you do it, it's a, it's genius. Of course. And it's the highest form of comedy. I see. I believe that is how that, that equation works. Um, who is talking about comedy breakdown in its most basic uh, math? Why, it's me, Nick, the Merc with a mic, uh, and your host uh, of the Netflix and Kill. And, of course, I have my co-host here, the god of the pod himself. Travis. Oh, and Travis, I am so excited for this one because... I'm just going to point this out right now. Yeah. This one's not my fault. This one is not your fault. No. Okay, cool. No way, shape, or form is this one my fault. Mm-hmm. Well, none of them are your fault anymore because we don't we don't allow you to pick movies anymore, <laughs> which is kind of the kind of how we've avoided things like Piranha 3D for this long for exactly. a long time. That's why I just want to say. But who's gonna fault. who's breaking our streak? Who 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 have we brought on that has selected this movie? Why? It is Rich Howard. Rich, would you like to say hi? Hi everyone. This isn't my fault either. By the way, just making this clear okay cool uh i don't know whose fault it is then well it's uh, your fault then by default i guess i'm the only one by left. default it's your fault uh i don't remember i got pretty much it yeah uh so rich yeah. would you like to give uh, i we've had you on the show before uh for the regular show but uh some of the people probably don't know you from listening to this so would you like to give a brief uh rundown of who you are and maybe uh the podcasts and some of the other projects you work on yeah the the last time i was on we were talking about young justice which is appropriate i'm the uh-huh. co-host of whelm the young justice files we're a fan cast that breaks down the DC animated series Young Justice. Uh, we discuss storytelling and writing theory, sociology, psychology, uh, interviews with the cast and crew, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the reason you brought me on today and subjected me to the film Piranha uh, is because I'm also a game designer, and I'm best known as uh, that aquatic guy. Uh, I design aquatic material for uh, D&D 5th edition and uh, other sci-fi and fantasy settings. Uh, as well as being one of the creators of the upcoming RPG Descent into Midnight, uh, which is a science fiction set. It's a science fiction game set on an aquatic alien world where the players are playing um, sapient aquatic species, uh, psychic, and fighting against a corruption that is both physical and existential. Um, with no human influence. So this is a game that focuses entirely on a non-human influence or style culture on an alien world. Wow, that is so specific. <laughs> uh, like you're the water guy for D&D. That sounds so fascinating. I want to do nothing else but ask you questions about that for the next hour and a half. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's well, going to be a different segment. <laughs> so we have to talk about... It'll be a different show. podcast. Yeah, we have, we have to talk podcast. about... I have... <laughs> We have to talk about the wonder that is Piranha. Piranha 3, uh, 3D. So, Rich... The water thing I'm hoping you had nothing to do with, because, so, wow. So, I had... Geez. 
I love how, nothing to do with this. I love how the, the the game you mentioned is so high end, like existential, like the the metaphysics of it, and yeah, oh, yeah. like so it very please, much high concept. So please explain a to lot me. like per- Piranha. Y- you got to explain because I did give you a running list of movies for us to cover. Like when when you picked this one, what what? Uh, so was it just the water feature that drew you to Piranha uh, when I gave you the list of uh, our like the short uh, list? Yeah, oh, wait, did I pick this? I don't even remember. Well, uh, for those, is it really? This, maybe it is my fault. The, those listening behind the scenes, this is a uh, a review long in uh, in production. We had to go do a little back and forth tagging. Um, and uh, Rich, I, I I hate to break it to you, my friend, but you did request like, oh, oh no, send me a short list of movies you haven't covered yet because you didn't want to pick a movie we'd already covered. And I keep yeah. I keep mm-hmm. a running short mm-hmm. list for occasions such as that so that um people can pick like can pick stuff from uh, things that are there and I and Piranha was on the list so you picked it out of a list of stuff that I don't remember what was on your version of the list because it was long uh so long ago and we've updated it but uh oh, yeah. yeah for sure yeah uh <laughs> um I guess I thought it might be vaguely interesting I did I sh- I mean you're like not wrong any, I, I I uh. It's interesting. I didn't well, say it was good. It's interesting. Is it? <laughs> well, I mean, of you there pick- are interesting things about it that have nothing to do with the actual film. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back and see if um, I can't find. I wish what, I'd have done a little research instead. I just figured it. I would just would have figured. I just figured it was like, oh, it's a movie. It's just like a horror, like scary, you know, kind of Netflixy, you know, sci-fi channel monster movie. You know, they always have those one one word name monster movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have done a little research, uh, cause then I, this movie is, I don't even know what to say. Uh, I, I have a long list of notes, uh, yes. and then mostly I, uh, I watched it and then had to like, uh, take a nap and like <laughs> let my brain reset itself. We've never, um, wow, we've never had that before. You're the first person we brought on that the, the movie drained them so hard they actually had to physically so recover after it normally did, people just have to, to mentally recover recuperate. that's that is great um i posted i posted about it on twitter and the only appropriate uh gif i could find was um the community one where they're running around and i can't remember who was somebody was saying my entire brain is crying it's a that's donald glover's character troy is the one that's, that's it yeah i don't right. know what he's do. running around the, my the whole guy, brain is crying this is secu- <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they, they've knocked the security guard out and he's running around in circles that's basically how i felt so, for those who have not seen this masterpiece, would you like to give a brief description of what the film is actually about, Rich? I really don't. <laughs> I just, wow, um, wow, I have no... Okay. It's going to be a very also, short review. Also, we've never had someone outright refuse to give a description before. Rich, you're breaking a lot of norms I don't know here. I, I don't know if I want to relive this movie. Okay, so um, it's a very complicated, high-concept film. Um, all right, so... Th- uh, they're at, uh, Lake Victoria. Um, I can't even remember if it, if it was like a made up lake or if it was a lake from somewhere specific. Do you guys even remember? Mm. I don't know. Anyway, it's a place called Lake Victoria. It's a big, like, tourist attraction lake. It's, uh, spring break, of course. Um, they're having a, they're having a, you know, heading down to Florida spring break celebration with, uh, a lot of, uh, teen, teens and college age kids there's an earthquake that happens wherever this is cracks open a fissure in the bottom of the lake which releases uh (laughs) previously thought extinct species of piranha into the lake um and everything goes pretty much the way you expect it after that um, also starring a bevy of, uh, what are they doing in this movie <laughs> level actors? Um, I don't know if they all lost a bet, if they all came up with the idea themselves on like a bender. I don't know. <laughs> but like the list of Academy and Golden Globe and like, <laughs> you know, like, like BAFTA awards. Look, look some people still need to, need to make those car payments. Like, it's just like this movie was like a, it was like a glimpse into a parallel dimension in which <laughs> all of these like, uh, award winning actors from our dimension, um, have to beg for food. I don't know. Like, 
Wow, you, I so love that you've created a whole separate world for this universe. Oh yeah, that, it's I, the I only. Mean, we got to do more reviews only, with game designers. <laughs> is what I'm learning only, from this review. The only way that my brain could process what I was watching well, was like, this can't be real. This can't be real. Well, Rich, I'm I'm so glad that you gave that detailed review because it gave me a chance to actually look up uh, the email exchange between us to see what you pick what you picked over this. Oh no! Yeah, so He's got the receipt, so you're in trouble. So oh, the shortlist I sent you, you picked Piranha over Sharknado. So okay, okay that was that's a, fine. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, uh, a Nicolas Cage movie, Doggy oh, Dog. N- there's no way I'm picking Nicolas Cage. So <laughs> that that tracks as well. All right, all right, and then something like Lady Bud fight, Kung Fu Killer. Oh no, you picked it over Hot Fuzz and Full Metal Jacket. Oh, oh, I can't do Full Metal Jacket. The <laughs> war movies, war movies get to me. Sure. Hot Fuzz, I, it's it's a kind of I, I'm maybe I'll love it, but it's the kind of movie that I don't usually enjoy. Okay, so I I've I just, never seen it though. There was no winning with you for the that was <laughs> anyway. well well I think it's gonna win for this review because I got opinions. Oh, okay. I got I, you know he doesn't have a synopsis, but he that, does have opinions. That is oh I don't <laughs> there's nothing to synopse. Um, I do have notes. I don't have a I mean I was I. Let's get That's to some it. of these That's notes because I took notes as well, and they're like they're not very coherent. Like, there's a lot of like exclamation points. There, there's basically just actors' names and then exclamation points and question marks afterwards. That's, that's, that's pretty valid, actually. Chris, Congratulations, you've just described this film. <laughs> Case in point, uh, we have the, our opener, which is uh, right. <laughs> which is uh, a. a an old man singing a, a sea shanty on uh, on a life on a life raft, but oh, not any, <laughs> not old, just man. any old man. Why it's no, ri- he's in like a fishing boat, and I'm like, oh my god, that's Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why is Richard Richard Dreyfus in this movie? And I think maybe this is also what set me up because I was like, Richard Dreyfus, star of Jaws, the like best aquatic horror movie ever made to this day in my the opinion aquatic horror movie the yeah. the classic the the introduction of the genre the creator of the genre is in this movie and i'm thinking like oh maybe the bar is higher than i thought <laughs> i did not set myself up for success with this thought i mean in any way it sets a bar um, just not the one you're expecting well, oh it's it's, it's kind of like the movie goes hey remember this movie we're definitely not as good as that movie, so yeah, we're definitely putting him in this because there's nothing else that we have in common in you know relation to that movie. Well, he's uh, our first first death, so the movie's really trying to warn us early, like yeah, don't expect that from us. We're well, not- you know what's funny is he dies before the credits tell us that he's in the film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so I, I'm like, that's Richard Dreyfus. What is happening? And then he dies weirdly and then uh it goes to the credits and at the end of the credits it says and richard dreyfus and i'm like oh does he have a twin brother mm-hmm. like is this the drunk brother that um that nobody likes and then richard dreyfus actual marine biologist or something is going to like show up in town looking for his missing brother i had a whole different story going on in my head Apparently he he got paid uh, a significant amount for a little amount of screen time. I think he like for a, a wa- like for a cameo. I think he got paid like fifty grand or something. And he do- but mean... he donated it all to charity. Oh, like he don't yeah. So <laughs> I, he could not have read this script. I, he I, could not have read the script. Well, I mean, he could have wrote his. He could have read his part of it. It probably fit on cocktail napkin. Of just like, <laughs> that's probably it. Yeah, probably just read much. Richard Dreyfus Jaws reference. <laughs> Like that's, right. That's it. Well, there was like, did you? God, what was it? Time Bandits. Do you guys even remember Time Bandits? That movie? Mm. Oh shit! Barely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it was within my lifetime and not quite in yours. I think. Mm-hmm. So I know, there was a dumb t- there was a. Po- <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I can hear I'm it old, in your old and voice. You guys are, rich. You guys are hip and you guys are hip and cool. <laughs> we ate avocado toast. You're damn right. We're hip and cool. I love avocado toast. I don't know what the problem with people in the avocado toast is. <laughs> anyway, so in that movie, when they were writing the script, it was Terry Gilliam, I think. He wrote the script and he said, he said, um, when this warrior walks up and takes his ha- helmet off, I want it to be someone famous, you know, Sean Connery, ha ha. Mm-hmm. Well, then Sean, somebody knew Sean Connery and said, do you want to do this? And he was like, this looks hilarious. I'm totally in. 
And then he was told, he took his helmet off and it's Sean Connery. And he was like the peak of Sean Connery's career back, in, you know, back in the day. And so, um, I, I feel like it's one of those, like he thought it was just going to be like, Oh, this is cute. I'll do this and throw some money at a charity kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't, I just don't know why he would want to be associated with this film. And that's fine, except there's like multiple other actors in this film that I would say the same thing and you know they read the script. So I mean, they're in the movie, so they had to have at least looked at the script. Mm -hmm. Should we I would guess. Should we meet some of our main characters here? Let's talk let's talk a little <laughs> oh, bit God. about uh Steve McQueen, uh our main guy. Like Steve <laughs> I know you're thinking Steve McQueen. <laughs> like, yeah. Like how how, how is he our Steve young McQueen is no longer alive. Yeah, I, I, did they yeah. Get, resurrect him from the... No, not that Steve McQueen. <laughs> I'm afraid we're talking about his grandson, uh, I believe, <laughs> is, is how he relates to him, is Stephen uh, R. McQueen. I see. So that's that's who our main guy is. What's that kid's... Oh, what's his name in the movie? Damn it. Jake. Uh, I was going to say Josh. I was going to... I was thinking of a douchey white name, and I got Josh, which is like only the second one. Jake, Jake is definitely the right one. Actually, Jake, his, his biography does him. say "Born Stephen Chadwick McQueen." Hmm? Chadwick? Oh, okay. Stephen C. McQueen. C. McQueen. Okay, go. I had to, I messed that one up. Oh, but no, is must have changed his name because it does say Stephen R. McQueen. Oh, yeah. it does say R. McQueen. Yeah. You know what? We we can't get hung up on the middle name, yeah, even whatever. though that's I the most fascinating would... mystery about this movie. Yes, um, we... It kind of is, though, because I was like, oh, I wonder if he's related to Steve McQueen. You've now answered my question. No, he's there definitely, yeah, he's his grandson. Uh, also, we have, of course, the sheriff, uh, Julie uh, Forrester, who is played right. by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shue. Shue. Which, Academy Award winner, Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> which is like, that one is very much me, like, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, Elizabeth Shue. Like, right, right. <laughs> Whether Elizabeth you accept it or not, she's actually in it. spelled, it's Elizabeth Shue actually spelled S H O U O E, uh, not S H U E. <laughs> they got a discount. Uh, Elizabeth Shue. They got a Shue. discount, Elizabeth Shue. Yeah. I was beginning to wonder, and then Jerry O'Donnell. Uh, shows up jerry o'connell i believe yeah uh, o'connell excuse me see i did the same thing you did with the c and the r and the j and the i don't even know what uh and i was and jerry o'connell <laughs> i like jerry o'connell uh, he's been in some stuff like you know sliders and i mean i don't think he's won a ton of awards well, but then he's, you back he's him been up. in a lot of stuff is yeah the thing. Uh, well I, yeah i thought to myself watching this and jerry o'connell shows up and i'm like that's jerry o'connell why am i watching jerry o'connell right now this isn't the 90s like right like uh right and he's playing well, uh what what's the name of his thing it's not girls I, gone wild I, the, it, it's yeah it's it's, it's wild 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 women or wild, something yeah like that. It, it's it's yeah. some derivative but but it's girls gone wild right. like he's, and pretty much three seconds into this movie i was like buddy if you don't die a horrible death I'm going to be very disappointed in this film. Well, he's super uh, sleazy in this film. Oh so my god, he has I to. hated every moment that character was in it. Which, and I like, <laughs> I like Jerry O'Connell. So, like, I was like, oh, you're doing a good job acting like this guy. I just don't know why you said yes to the script. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> apparently Jerry O'Connell okay. keeps getting into trouble because uh, the main guy from uh, Girls Gone Wild, I forget his name, Joe, something. Ah, damn it. I, don't care honestly he, but yes he he was gonna sue the movie joe francis that's his name uh he, he was gonna sue the movie uh company or whatever because they uh the allusion to his character like hey you're showing a, a parody of me doing drugs and and being really just towards women. underage women and <laughs> yeah and it's like and then they're like, no, no, it's not you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And Jerry O'Connell just keeps saying that in, in any interview, he'll always say like, oh yeah, I'm totally doing an impression of that guy. Yeah. And he yeah, keeps, yeah. but then he like addendum said, but for legal reasons, I can't say but that. For legal reasons. <laughs> so yeah, so that's who he's playing. Uh, oh, also we have, uh, the deputy, the sheriff's deputy played by Ving motherfucking <laughs> Rames. Yep. Rames. That's also a thing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> So he's also in this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then even Christopher Lloyd shows up later. And that Christopher was my, Lloyd. I love that. That's amazing. So Christopher Lloyd shows up. I didn't catch him in the opening credits. I, I was like, this, this movie's bonkers. Christopher Lloyd shows up. Like once again, he, I don't think he read the script. He had like three seconds of screen time, 
but they like break into this guy's house or, or bust in and they're like, Professor, come out here and tell us what this is. And there was no setup for his character at all. And he comes out of the back room and he's just Doc Brown. Yeah, he is. I know. He's totally he's just, just like He's Doc just Brown. Doc Brown if, if Doc Brown was like a paleontologist. He even has a line. Uh, what was the line? It was uh... – uh, yes, right. He, he's talking about like, uh, oh, so, uh, what, how, about what time should, should we, uh, you know, close down the lake and, and, uh, uh, how fast could these piranhas rest? Well, uh, yesterday would have been a good time. <laughs> yesterday would have been a good time. And he does the thing where his hands are up by his head and he like, he's just, he's just Doc Brown. Yep. Lucky, lucky enough, I actually have a, a plan for that. I've been working on it. Marty, Marty, get, get the DeLorean. Right. We need to go fight some fish. <laughs> it's another right. fish body. We have to go back. <laughs> um and uh of course elizabeth shoe who was in those movies yeah and she was in those so it's like a little fa- back to the future reunion which is great like <laughs> so it's-, it's just so bad anyway okay so these are the the i don't know how many awards like how many tons of awards by weight this group of people have quite a few um a, a couple one well, or two Elizabeth Shue um, on her own is just like it's surprising and they're ge- and they're starring in, in a film with uh people like you know Riley Steele and Gianna Michaels and some other adult film actresses are in this uh oh really I do not know them uh <laughs> so I was like yeah well, I, I, had, I didn't I had to look them up on IMDB IMDB rich it's not like I recognize them from their faces like, no. just, oh okay cool it's not like I recognize like them in the immediately know. <laughs> I have no judgment for me man it's all good I just don't happen to know them so Def- there you go definitely had to look them up later <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> uh, nudge nudge wink wink I love how uh, if you look at any of their IMDB pages it's always like the pictures don't load on their actual like um the movies they're known for and actors they just don't <laughs> just load like a content warning on their- yep they just don't load <laughs> oh, oh god and you know i i feel bad there was so there's uh you know mr mcqueen and then there was the woman who was playing his like childhood friend oh not girlfriend what was her name kelly Kelly. Kelly was the character's name. Yes, Kelly was the character's name. But I, I don't recognize her either. Do you Played know who- by Jessica Shore or Sore. I don't know. There's a Z in there. Right. I don't know how to pronounce. So that. I can see like an agent saying like, "I got you this movie. It's with Elizabeth Shue <laughs> and Ving Rhames. Yep. And right. That Kristen sounds Lloyd. Right. And she's I hope all. She fired I'm that one. In. Yeah, I'm into this. <laughs> I'm totally in. You would have mentioned any of those names, and you'd be in. Right. And there's only one scene in which Jerry Jerry Connell has to drink tequila out of your belly button. All right. I'm in. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we have, oh, boy. Um, oh, that's right. Adam Scott is in this, guys. For, Fucking, some, uh, for a reason. I don't actually remember why, but he's there. <laughs> oh, Adam Scott. was he? The, he's the marine biologist guy? Yeah, the, yeah. Ge- the geologist? Well, so I, I, I have some pretentious yeah. name for In it. my head, he's on loan from uh, the Parks right. and Recreation <laughs> right. set. Like he's, it's just his character there. He's just had to go fight an fish adventure. Like That's that's what my headcanon is, because that's what I, I like to picture. Sure. So your headcanon is basically that Piranha 3D is somehow a spin-off of Parks and Recs? Yeah. Yeah. And then You know what? Like, that's great. I'll take it. No, I, I would imagine. Like you know, he's just he's uh you know uh, doing an inspection no, no, to see no, for no. Leslie Nope. He's doing an inspection here. See, no remember, they were seismologists. That was the douchey name for it. Seismologist. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were a size they were seismologists. Seismologists who were trained in cave diving not well, yeah. by the way, as well. That also, was, that's interesting. I don't mean to judge, but is seismology a made-up word? Probably. Because it sounds made up. Like I'm Seismologists? Not gonna, yeah. No, that's, no. That's that a, a real thing. thing? That's a thing? Okay. No, it's a the, thing. The word just sounds made up to me. <laughs> they study earthquakes, um, Nick. Come on. More than likely, they would probably... They. I don't know if they would use that word. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I. You know, I mean, yes, somebody who studies earthquakes... You know, but like my dad's a geologist, so like he can tell you all about earthquakes as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, there's just like, uh, but also there were, so cave diving training is is hard, guys. <laughs> like it, it's it's tough. You don't just put on some scuba gear and go into a cave. Um, and whoever that guy, the guy who died first, I, I'm surprised he even made it to the piranha to get eaten because that guy was super big with a lot of tanks on and decided he was just going to be macho and go in first Mm -hmm. and i'm like uh no you you let the tiny person go in first because she's right you're gonna get stuck (laughs) like she's all your fat ass is gonna get us killed i'm like yeah that's listen to the woman (laughs) she knows uh, she has training you're a moron and so then he goes into this cave yeah 
So, so I, I guess we should get to any kind of plot point. So this thing Sorry, we, happens. We keep talking about the people and not the fish, who are the real stars of this movie. <laughs> oh, <God>. Right. <laughs> well, so the earthquake happens. The earthquake happens. Some seismologists come out. These piranha come out of this hidden under underground lake, which is a thing. Yeah. But uh, so they come out of this underground lake, and no, um, pr- animals coming out of the underground lake is not a thing. An underground lake is a thing. So, so they come out and they start eating Richard Dreyfus. And, um, there's a connection between the surface lake and this underwater lake. So these seismologists come out to study the earthquake, which doesn't seem like it would have even registered very much. Um, well, it also happened because there was too much trash in the lake. Well, it seemed like it happened. No, because that that's beer, not why. It that, well, I mean, it seemed like the beer bottle maybe yeah. was like the last straw there, which I'm like, I don't right. think that's how earthquake works. Well, that's what they showed. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, if you were a seismologist, I could tell you that that's not how earthquake works. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of trash on that bottom of that lake, which is also unfortunately not. Um, that's actually probably the most accurate thing in the film. <laughs> I would say, yeah. So, so you know, so seismologists show up. On a lake for a small earthquake that no one who lives on the lake has noticed has opened a fissure because water would have dropped. Water levels would have dropped in the whole lake. And then that, that's, that might have brought someone out eventually. Mm -hmm. But like, they're like, oh yeah, there's a fissure under you. I was like, what do you get? Star Trek levels of technology here? Mm -hmm. Scanning? I mean, how do you know this is happening? And also, why would you, like, you are prepped. They're sort ready of. to go. Like, yeah, you brought a bunch of aquatic gear and you're going under. I mean, so many people would already be dead by the time actual team would have been out there. Like so somebody would have mustered money. are not money. your first responders, what you're saying. Right, <laughs> right. Not your first responders for Lake Piranha. Ancient Lake Piranha. Um, yeah, really. Yeah. Anyway, that's the basic plot of the movie-ish, if you can call it that. Sure. And then uh, people die. I mean, it makes sense A lot sense of people die. A lot of people die and a lot of excess nudity. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It excess is, seems... It is... No, that's that's a pretty accurate word, yeah. It is fish... No, it's <laughs> excess for sure. Yeah. It is fish, blood, and tits on the menu today, that's for sure. Yeah, it's... The the woman who was on the 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 parasail, uh, that one kind of... Because they were, like, dropping her into the water and back up out of the water and mm-hmm. down in the water and back up in the water, and, of mm-hmm. course, that was... I was like, yeah, of course that's what you're going to do. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what you're going to do. Like, I'm like, if if I was forced to make this movie, I'd be like, yeah, you got to do that scene. I oh, mean, no. you just <laughs> there's nothing unexpected in the film, really. Except for the except for Christopher Lloyd, like or whatever. Like but um yeah, the the CGI effects also. The the cutting edge of 2010 um CGI for sure. <laughs> mhm. Yeah, and our uh, <laughs> our hero, uh, uh, Steve McQueen, is uh, or Steve McQueen Light, I guess you'd say, is Diet is, Steve McQueen. Diet Steve McQueen. Diet Steve. <laughs> what if, he he is uh, stuck babysitting on what their spring oh. break is. So, he, but he gets the job offer from uh, uh, Jerry O'Connell's not Girls Gone Wild guy. And everyone's just a different, like a not version in this movie. Is what I'm realizing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a discount, right? Uh, but and boy, he was he was super tense. This mm-hmm. whole movie, yeah. And so he wants to go on the job by uh, scouting lo- uh, scouting locations for them, but he has to like bribe the his siblings, uh, and he's the son of the sheriff. So he, he right. Uh, so the sher- the sheriff's busy because it's spring break mm-hmm. and then there's an earthquake with a seismology team that emergency seismology team coming out and Richard uh, Driver responding. Dead. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Richard Driver shows up dead and then she has three kids, the eldest one being Jake and then Jake has to babysit the two little ones but he wants to go do something else. Um this is another thing that had me like through the roof like don't put little kids like that in danger for me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's almost like a no-go. I kept having to, like, slowly, like, slide past any scene in which these little kids, I'm a dad, and I'm like, don't do this. Don't, don't, <laughs> and, and then the scenes that were just horror, like, when, when Jerry O'Connell finally dies, sort of, it's really bad, and the kids are there, like, watching, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I can't handle 
any of this. Please take these children off this set. Man, you who should let, definitely not watch the new It movie. This... Oh, God, no. <laughs> she, she just gets raw oh. for kids. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, would you like to read a little bit of this dialogue here? Because this is what's really fun about this why movie. Not? Cause, why not? Why uh, not? We meet Danny, who is one of the uh, wild girls that uh, Jerry and Connell employs, and she meets uh, Laura, which is uh, Steve McQueen's sister, Sister who's probably ten, mm-hmm. maybe maybe twelve at the most. She's yeah. written like one of those really smart ten year olds though that has like an adult right. vocabulary, exactly. So- and she plays the trombone, so you can tell she's like the smart one, mm-hmm. right? And then Danny meets her and goes, "Hey, nice horn," and she responds, "Thanks, nice, nice boobs." boobs. <laughs> In which Danny responds, "Thank you." <laughs> then Laura goes, "I have a training bra, but I don't like to wear it because it's itchy because it itches." <laughs> Danny goes, "Tell me about it." Who are you waiting for? Laura and Laura goes, My brother Jake, he's 17. He'll like your boobs too. To which Danny responds, They all do. <laughs> right. This movie is amazing. This, <laughs> this scene, that scene right there, I actually thought was cute. Yeah. That is like one of the, the best the, scenes in this movie, guys. It's like, actually no the lie. best scene. Surprisingly, uh, really good child actors. Good child right. actor. And then they actually were. I and actually like Danny they, as a character. Yeah, I I know. I mean, Danny was like, oh, this Lord, is going to be that. This is, this is going to be that the the hot adult woman, you know, who's going to get in between, who's going to make the the male lead realize he's really in love with the female lead, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. No, but Dan- I was like, oh, I quickly like her actually, <laughs> mm-hmm. and like, she plays wingman to 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 uh, Jake uh, the whole fucking movie. Yeah. Like she is, he does she does? Yeah, she's helping. He's helping. Like, oh, you like that girl, Kelly? Okay, I'll, I'll man, I'm gonna I'm gonna baby step you through this. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm, right. I'm your wingman. I'll make this happen for you. Just don't worry right. about it. I got this. Totally got right. this. Right, <laughs> and I love Kelly too. Who's Kelly's only uh, fucking character trait is that she does anything that anyone tells her not to do. <laughs> like, yeah, basically. I really uh, like when the way the movie shot. I'm like, well, you're gonna make it, but I don't fucking care if you make it. <laughs> she, right. I mean, uh, so that's great. She gets dragged along on the on the boat trip as well. Well, no, no, she actively goes on the boat trip because right, right. they tell her she not does. to go on the boat trip. She goes, well, because you said no. Well, it's like that that one time, like when you act inter- like it's like that old cliche of like, oh, well, just act disinterested, mm-hmm. and then the girl will obviously come to you. Yeah, and to the to the yeah. point of like. Uh, no, please don't come with me on this trip. Like, oh, well, I'm definitely coming, and give me that shot of tequila. Like, she takes she takes it to a whole like eleven. Like, right? Um, yeah. This I I want to talk about the kids again. You're right. Both of those kids were really good actors, mm-hmm. and I was thinking about like like a movie like Jurassic Park. The kids being in danger doesn't bother me. Okay. This was like they had. I was like, you have these little kids that are on this set with this wild, wild women thing going on and you know like uh spring break college spring break stuff going on with i don't know how they were isolating these kids from what was actually happening and at first i was like okay well i don't see the kids scenes anywhere near any of the other stuff okay but then they get the kids on the boat and jerry o'connell is like cursing up a storm and talking about stuff in front of these kids and i don't know i maybe i'm just a prude as i get older but i which i'm definitely not but I'm just like, guys, really? Like, mm, I don't. Ugh. I hope those kids get more acting gigs because they were really good. Well, that's also about the same time that um, he finds out that Jake's mother is the sheriff. He goes like, "Wait a damn second! Oh, that right. was not on the tin." Well, yeah, right, that was exactly. another. You didn't you didn't mention any of that <laughs> before I did all this, like, like while he's got drug. cocaine yeah. all over his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing his great Joe Silver impression. (laughs) Right. Oh, okay. Uh, Right. (laughs) I got to say, guys, I know we've been kicking this movie in the dick a little bit, but I love it. I love this trash, (laughs) trash movie. I I shit you not, Rich. This is exactly the type of film that I love to do where it just takes it. It goes like, (laughs) you know what? We're not that good, but you know what we are? We're a lot. (laughs) Yes. Some, some, yes. Film, some films treat it like you know what less is more in this scene, and in no movie is that more untrue than this one. In which <laughs> in this movie, I believe that every scene was met with the attitude of no. In fact, more is more. <laughs> right. <laughs> more blood. Uh, more tits. More death. Like, do you, do you yes. know? Like, there is actually a 
uh, how much blood, fake blood, was used in this movie, Travis? Mm, couldn't even fathom. 75,000 gallons. That's a lot of blood. A that day. That sounds right. <laughs> a God. day. How, how many days? Nine days. Oh. Wow. This movie took nine days to shoot. <laughs> that Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> not apparent. <laughs> more, not more time filming is more. That's definitely not. Um, there was a lot of blood. Particularly in the scenes, and I mean, they must have had to use a lot of it for the scene toward the end in which everyone has gathered, like, I don't know, a few thousand extras. Well, like, I, I don't have the amount of wet extras t-shirt here. contact. Yeah, the wet I shirt contest. I have the amount of boats, though. <laughs> That's an oh. odd, odd statistic. How many boats were there, Travis? In the massacre scene, there is 1,112 boats. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all, a lot of those people okay. are actually actual spring breakers that they, uh, used up for use for casting. So that was great. Um, and man, if there's anything that this movie is leading up to is this big feeding frenzy, it is awesome it's, it it's is real bad great there it's are... real bad and and let me give you let me give you a security tip uh having been uh worked security at a few events uh including at burning man um you don't drive up with your uh police bullhorn when you have what 20 what did she say Twenty thousand people mm-hmm. yeah uh and and start uh Blaring out with your bullhorn, expecting people to do what you say. Yeah. You go to the DJ. Yeah. You tell them, people are going to die. Give me your mic. And then you take the mic because they have better sound than you do. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the DJ goes, holy crap, man. Yeah. And then they give you the mic because they're not idiots. And then you tell people what's happening. Then if you turn off the music, it's just going to be less of a party. <laughs> right. And then Ving Rhames comes up. In his boat, I know it's Ving Rhames, but he can only be so intimidating to 20,000 yeah. drunk people. Uh, with his bullhorn, uh, somebody says something about beer, and then everybody dies. I, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, Crazy. that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty oh, much boy. it. Uh, but I have to say, the best, the best scene for me that <laughs> for, for this kind of movie was Ving Rhames with the motorboat engine... Oh my uh, god. <laughs> wielding it like a weapon that in the amazing. water as the piranha are coming at him and he is chewing them up. I was like, yeah, this is yeah. This this is perfectly on brand for this movie and I love it. I actually love this scene. <laughs> so, way back when when I saw this movie in the theater, and that's yes, a I, thing you did. And yes I did. No. On a, on a no, date, no. On a date no less. <laughs> I was on a date. Yeah. And and when that happened, I I threw my hands up in the air and wooed like woo, like I was on a goddamn water slide with fake blood. Like that whole scene was awesome. And then my day my day just looks back at me like I think I have to recontextualize my relationship. And I was like, ah, eh, you no regrets now. We're at least in it for this movie. <laughs> right, you gotta make it. Well, you, no, you don't. You don't have to make it to the end of this movie. She could have walked out. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, <laughs> she should have. Oh my god. Uh. And uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, also, there is a 3D shot sequence in this movie of a of two women swimming and making out underwater. So that happens. Yes, uh, that to, does happen to opera music, which was interesting. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think it was a French opera, too, which is weird. But, you know, uh, teach their own. I mean, I prefer a good Norse melody when uh, during my uh, adult, you know, uh, swimming makeout sequences. But that's just me. Um, <laughs> so this movie was actually shot in 2D, but converted to 3D later, believe it or not, even though it was fully intentionally to be in 3D the whole time. Like, there was never a question of this movie huh. was going to be in 3D. Um, also, they just didn't film it in 3D. <laughs> Also, I'm, uh, if you're looking for the movie on Netflix, you might not want to look up Piranha 3D, because on Netflix it just shows up as Piranha. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, even though everywhere else it's listed as Piranha 3D, which is not to be confused with its sequel, Piranha 3 Double D. Uh, which. No. Hmm, yeah, that's the, that's the name of it. No. I, I shit you not, no, Rich. Like, that's not a thing. I don't, I would not make that up. Should I we, wish I could make that up, Rich. Should we, should we tell him what's in that one? <laughs> oh. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go take another nap. I, I, my brain can't handle. <laughs> Processing power uh, is out. I, oh, boy. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, I'm into this movie. 
Uh, I, I love, I, I even love that they, they blow their wad on the whole piranha. They, they're really cute with not showing the piranha for the midpoint of this movie, which is weird because they showed them immediately in the opening. Yeah. So it's not like a Jaws thing where we're waiting to show the shark for the right moment. We showed them eating Richard Dreyfus. So I'm not sure why we're being all cute with not showing them, uh, in the middle. Yeah. Other than just saving on the budget. Uh, yeah. Also, the CG on the piranha is, well, I mean, it's, uh, I want to say it's really bad, but I have seen worse. Right. Yeah. So the, 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 the design of the fish I thought was interesting. Yeah. Cause they're like, it, they're, they're obviously CG mm-hmm. things. Uh, and maybe, maybe we've got like eight, I, I, I mean, I would say eight years, but probably, at least a dozen years of technology between what they used for this movie and what was probably what we'd see now. So our eye is probably caught up. Like if you go back and watch the original Star Wars, you know, the that was actually in the theater, you can see like white squares around the TIE fighters as they're flying around. Like it's real obvious to us now because our eyes are used to processing things a lot faster than back in the day. So it, they may have just stuck out. The design was actually kind of, interesting but oh my gosh <laughs> oh i'm oh i'm sorry gosh. actually i i read a false statistic before sorry uh the ma- the nine days to film it was actually the massacre at the end that was nine days the whole film actually took about a month that was that was my bad hmm. oh okay I, I, feel okay. Like almost, that up. I feel like that's too long <laughs> is that better or worse <laughs> i don't know i feel like this movie feels like you're watching it for a month at times so <laughs> I uh, don't know how they got these actors. <laughs> that was actually most of the 42 days was convincing the actors to actually be on set. Right. I'm actually con- uh, curious about the budget of this film and how much went to just the actors for it. But, uh, yeah. I, so, uh, we even have like some stereotypical bullies that show up later, like, uh, during the massacre that they don't, they're only bullies for like a, a minute in the beginning to, uh, Steve McQueen. And yes. Which is the only reason we're supposed to hate them later in the movie. Like they almost they spend almost no time, uh, uh, you know, interacting with any of the main crew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just they throw right. a slushy on the kid or something. Yeah, yeah, well, they throw a slushy on him and flip him off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which tell me wrong. Girl. Yeah, that's a dick thing to do. But I guess we're supposed to root for their deaths near the end because mm. they were rude. So there's that. Although I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I. I'm disturbingly on board for when people are starting to die. Oh, that's the best part of the movie. Oh, man. It's just... Maybe it's just my inner bloodlust. I, I find it very concerning, but I'm just like... The whole time of just people getting hit by boats and just piranha everywhere and people freaking out and but even like betraying one another to try and like get away. <laughs> oh, my God. The one guy who just like takes the boat and just starts running I mean, over people. <laughs> I want to I wanna save some of it for a spoiler section, but... Uh, yeah, that's the best part of the movie. That the the only problem is that the movie climaxes with me for that that part, and then it goes on for another fifteen minutes for the actual main characters, it, and I'm kind of like, yeah, it's basically you see that part, and you go like, if that part ends, and the movie goes, like, so you care about the plot now? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> plot? I'm sorry, I misheard you. This you is said like plot. After the massacre is done, you might as well just turn the movie off because yeah. it's like, yeah, this was the part I was here for. So like, that's about it. Um, after, 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 for me, I was like, how are you going to, how are you going to stop these piranhas? It's not a shark. Oh it's man. Thou- it's thousands of fit. There's no way that you how can kill them all. How they stop the piranha? You know what? We got to save that for the spot. We can't spoil everything, but we have yeah. to talk about that. It is. <laughs> wow. What? Like, yeah. Like, like the levels of logic that you have to do- go and wait. It, the, the amount of that wouldn't work going on in that plan yeah. is just staggering. I'm pretty sure there is no logic to it. <laughs> yeah. It is very much sans logic. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, uh, I really did enjoy the child actors in this movie. Uh, I, I found them pretty compelling. I even thought Steve McQueen was serviceable as a main character. He's not, I mean, He's not. He didn't have much to work with, but I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. He, he he doesn't have more than just like the stereotypical main dude role to do. But when to be to be fair, when shit really hits the fan, he is quick to go. Oh shit, I fucked up. Let me let's go grab the kids and go home and call mom. And like when he realizes he's in over his head, he he quickly tries to rectify the situation. Um, yeah. 
I, I mean, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the Kelly character because there's nothing to her except for I'm the, I'm, I'm the contrary. love interest and I'm contrary. Yeah. Like that's my yeah. thing. Um, yeah. Not I a like, great character. Yeah. I like Danny better as a character. Danny is really cool. I, for, for whatever little line she gets, her being like this awesome wingman to Jake and like just helping him out and being very supportive. Um, and yeah, I love to hate, uh, 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 O'Connell's character. Uh, yeah, I'm. You know, I, it's hard for me to explain why some of these movies work for me and some don't. Because I also watched a movie that was similar, Shark Night 3D, as well. And that movie's a piece of shit. I don't. I hate that movie. Uh, <laughs> okay. And to to try and describe why I don't like that one and I like this one is a very hard equation. Um. And I, guess, I can only imagine the <laughs> amount of calculus that has to go into that equation. The only thing I can think of is that it's kind of like why I watch Gotham and I'm like, everything is to 11 and they don't, they never take their foot off the gas and, okay. and everything is done with such a, there's so much effort. There's just so much, I think. It's the, like people, like, and I know that's me trying to s- sound like my kid is doing great in their recital when they're singing off key. Cause I'm like, oh, but they're, you they're tried, trying hard. <laughs> you tried so hard, honey. Right. But right. they really are. Like there's, they're trying here. <laughs> like this. Well, Elizabeth, I mean, Elizabeth Shue, and she could easily have slept walk through this, but she didn't. She's she's there and she's given her line reads. She about, does. She's, she puts, she's, she's, uh, <laughs> Ving Rhames is giving it his all in this. He's really giving totally it there. Is. He's trying to. He's basically trying to be Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead, and he's pulling it off. It's it's amazing. I mean, I I I, I will I will never recommend anyone watch this movie. <laughs> having said that, having said that, I love this movie more for your passion for it. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Uh, You're with very that, welcome. I'm going to give it, uh, Rich, we like to give a, a little bit of an arbitrary rating system, uh, here. So I give it out of five. Travis gets it out of 10. You can give it out of 69, which I feel like would be appropriate for this movie. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I give it four, um, we, four, uh, dicks being eaten out of five. It is mm. a blast of a time for a movie of this level. And I know it's not, everyone's type of movie but it's it really is just so much fun i can't explain why i have such a fun time watching this movie um but we're gonna give it over to travis travis last thoughts and rating what what do you got yeah so i mean i actually do agree with you here on the fact that this movie just kind of goes all out and it makes it so much better for that in fact fuck you my my rating system is not arbitrary i have a system yeah that's right you do have a system i actually have a number rating that it could not be which okay it it actually cannot be a four because fours had potential but didn't commit Mm-hmm. This movie does. <laughs> this movie, this movie, movie commits fully, one hundred percent. If this movie does anything, it commits. <laughs> so by default, this movie cannot get a four for me. Yeah, it, it just can't. I have a rating system. I follow it. <laughs> so <laughs> you give it a five. Is it a five by a technicality. Uh, no, I'm gonna give it a six. Wow, it jumps oh, up two numbers. It, it actually does. But it's because, oh my god, this movie is dumb. This, <laughs> you cannot describe this movie as anything but dumb. But. Boy, is it dumb! <laughs> like, it's so bad. It is dumb, and it, this has been. Uh, we recorded a commentary for this, and boy, was that fun! <laughs> yeah, that's right. We did record a commentary for our Patreon uh, listeners. If you're interested in that, uh, check out that because it is it's, it's an interesting experience. It really is, and I uh. I have to give the movie credit. I'm sorry, it's not a good movie. It's not, but. <laughs> I still have to give it credit. Travis has to, through sheer, <laughs> through... <laughs> just impressiveness. It's just, it impressed me. <laughs> not sheer on any... force of will. Yeah. It just gets it on. Rich, uh, <laughs> would you like to give your final thoughts and a sure, rating? Yeah, I, I will do a, I'll do a, a 7.5 scale since you have a 5 and a 10. You know, round right it out a little, even, right down the middle. And uh, I'm going to give it a, a real solid, uh, I'm going to give it a solid 2. Um <laughs> The only reason I don't give it a one is because um, somebody's going to love this film. Yep, they're going to they're going to love. I'm watching. I'm, somebody I'm, already has. I am I am watching this movie and I am like, this is made for a very excited audience that is not me, that is not aimed at me. Um, 
Yeah. And also, okay, you know what? I may have to give it a three. Um, <laughs> just because somebody had the tenacity or the audacity to ask Ving Rames and Elizabeth Shue and Richard Dreyfus and Christopher Lloyd to be somebody said we should put this script that you got to get him give him an extra point for just putting the script in front of these people not I mean who did they put it in front of who said no that's what I want to know like <laughs> I don't know that's a good question. they got these pe- mean, these got these people to say yes these weren't the first four people they handed it to you know that they did you know that they they handed it to <laughs> Sorry. Will this you be a dreamcast or a nightmare you, cast at this know, point? You know they handed it to Bruce Campbell. You know they oh, yeah. did. And mm-hmm. Bruce Campbell said no, but Ving Rhame said yes. Yep. Uh, that's, that's my that's my headcanon. That tracks. Actually, I'm pretty sure there was something in the trivia that said that James Cameron said no. What? <laughs> they wanted him to do a cameo since he... Because for those of you who don't know, one of James Cameron's earlier projects was Piranha 2 The Spawning. <laughs> So oh for you, James God. Cameron aficionados. Uh, uh, and you know what? I think part of the reason why I picked quote unquote piranha was because I think, I, I think I remember this thought process. I thought it was the original. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and I was like, Oh, an old school piranha movie hmm. silliness. Okay, great. No, this was 2010. Like, it was. uh, I was like, Oh, Okay, this is the only one on Netflix. I guess this has got to be the one. It's got to be the one. Um, yeah. And boy, well, was it that the one. That was the it, it was the only was. one. It was Destiny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was great. Also, I, I do believe that they handed the script to Christopher Lloyd after they saw him do the Tremors TV series and were like, oh, he'll definitely he'll do, do anything. He'll do anything. <laughs> so that that's, makes sense. Well, anyway, uh, thank you so much, Rich, uh, for uh, reviewing this with us. We're, we're going to take a small musical break and uh, come back with the spoiler section for this movie because we got to talk about how the ultimate demise of the piranha. But before we do that, well, I want to make sure... need another physical rest before we continue. I just, I just want to... I may need a nap. I just want to make sure people can know where to find you on the interwebs and stuff, all your sure. social medias and all that good stuff, where they can find you. <clears throat> Yeah, you can find me on, I'm, I'm largely on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at the YJ files is for the show whelmed the young justice files. You can find me personally at umbral walker. That's U M B R A L W A L K E R. You can also find uh descent into midnight at D I M R P G. Uh, we have our playtest packets, public playtest packets are now available. So, um, you, if you go on our website at descentintomidnight.com, you can hear some audio of some of our real early playtests, um, that are pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, the players were incredible. Um, and, but you can now go and pick up the playtest packets for yourself so you could run a game for yourself. We're also running a bunch of games at Gen Con. Um, Taylor Labresh, uh, Richard Kreutz Landry and I, the three uh, core designers are all running play tests at uh, Gen Con. So if you're interested in that, pop on the Twitter feed and let us know. That is great. I, <laughs> I'm actually very interested in that now. I want to, I want to see your next game as you've obviously will take inspiration from Piranha 3D. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to see what kind of critical double D rolls we'll get. Uh, I, I love can it. guarantee you this movie is not going into the uh, movie, you know, bibliography of the game. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, says that now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but yes, we're going to take a small musical break, and we'll be back with the spoiler section right after this. And welcome to the spoiler section for Piranha 3D. Oh boy, where to even begin? That's what we so had a problem with the first time. We, we didn't spoil know where almost. Let's spoil it's... everything. Okay. So uh, <laughs> we already did. Starting with, what's our personal favorite kills? Because we have a plethora to choose from. Hmm. Uh, oh. So initially, I I go back and forth because. Uh, I really like Ving Rhames' death that we've already talked about, in which he rips out a boat repeller and uses it as a weapon 
in order to save civilians uh, from the from the piranha uh, by churning in and at, even as he is dying, he is killing yes. piranha and never more has Ving Rhames had a more Bruce Campbell moment <laughs> in his life. Right? Yeah. It, All he needed to do was just attach it to his arm, and mm-hmm. it would have been slightly more Bruce Campbell. And there's blood and fish guts and stuff going all over the place, even as he's being mid-eaten. It is amazing. It is like, like just 80s B-movie type death scene <laughs> that is yes. just, just, just great. It's sublime. But I personally have a different favorite kill, really? which, which is uh, the other adult film actress in this movie, Ashley Brooke. Uh, is sliced in half by a rampant cable in which it slices off her top first, revealing her breasts, and then she looks down and realizes that she has been cut in half, and then her top half slides down her lower half into the water to be eaten by the fish. Those lovely, like, the, that gravity that only works when you acknowledge that it works. Yep. Right, right. It's, it's like the wily e. Coyote. Quantum, <laughs> quantum gravity. <It's, laughs> that was... Awesome. Like, it comes out of nowhere. Like, the, the just this rampant cable of just, whoa, shit. Uh, but there's a plenty of other deaths. Did anyone else have a other favorite death, uh, or, or kill that they were, they were wanting to mention? I'll be honest. Yeah. I did actually like the one where the guy's trying to drive away in the boat. Just cause, like, <laughs> wow, that's such a douche <laughs> thing to do. Just, but I'm like, I'm just bam, waiting bam. at that point. I'm like, okay, you gotta get your own then. You obviously have to get your own because everyone's movies just trying to save each other. He's the only one that's like, nope. Fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> so I was like, I was all in on that one. I'm like, nope, you have to die. Oh boy, L- movie law dictates you must die. Rich, how about you? Uh, you know, you know, you described it in such uh, beautiful detail. Um, the Ving Rhames uh, situation was absolutely my favorite in the movie. I was uh, super happy to see Jerry O'Connell's character die a horrible death um, from the waist down. They, um, they, they took my penis. But he, they took my penis. He, they took my penis. <laughs> I, uh, I, unfortunately, he didn't quite, die quite fast enough, though he did manage to save everyone. So in the end, he was the hero of the film. Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah. It only took, <laughs> as half a man, he was more than ever he was when he was alive. <laughs> yes! <laughs> This it really is a a a, uh, a yes. deep in depth tale as you can tell. <laughs> wow, I cannot believe you put such a deep philosophical twist <laughs> on that terrible character. I I my hats off to you, sir. Well, oh. obviously, judging from his character, he never eats a woman out as well. He doesn't go down, that's for sure. But oh. being eaten is the, his other salvation. Oh, if had if had more, he had been more of a giving lover. Maybe for maybe he would not have been eaten from the waist down. No, I, but he'd be dead. Maybe. I mean, also, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe not. I, yeah, I, maybe. I the feel, others might be dead then. Hmm? No, yeah, I, I feel know. like the whole movie is a metaphor for more men to give oral sex. I could be reading more into that than I'm than I think. I can almost guarantee you, you are. I, I was just, <laughs> no, you have to realize the subtle metaphor and in contri- in- in- intricacy. Nick, you just said the word subtle in a Piranha 3D review. I know, that's why I can't even say in- intricacy. Yeah. yeah, just stop. Please. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> oh, man, I can't even get oh. through it. Also, so that's great. Uh, there's, uh, uh, at, uh, oh, man, I forgot his name, uh, Parks and Rec guy. Uh, Adam Scott. Adam Scott, Adam Scott yeah. jumps on a fucking jet ski with a shotgun, pumps that shit, and is like, don't worry, I got this. And I'm yeah. like, sure you do. Let's do some quick math here. So there's like maybe, what, eight rounds in that shotgun? Maybe 12, <laughs> depending on the type of shotgun, uh, and if it has been loaded fully, and if there's one in the chamber. So let's give them 12 on it. There is about, I don't know, one, two, three, uh, a thousand piranha. So, thousands. yeah, for sure. I, <laughs> uh, and so that's great. The, the, the kids are trying to uh, run over each other. There's like extras in the background while other people are half eaten and other people are looking confused and obviously trying to figure out where they belong in the shot. There's people with blood on them, but no <laughs> bite mo- wounds. Like yep. there's, oh boy, that scene is just gravy. But, unfortunately, we have to go back to our heroes. And after yeah. uh, uh, Jerry O'Connell, has his upper half has made the ultimate sacrifice, uh, Danny, unfortunately, dies uh, during that sequence because, I guess, she needed to for whatever reason. Like, just wait at one more death. Yeah. 
uh, and the, the game, the game master made a made an NPC that was way too interesting. <laughs> I was stealing Which is the show. Weird. She, so somebody like, had to die. She must have really r- rolled a natural run because she mentioned her. Po- she was proficient in pole dancing. Like that I know, was right. That was a thing that they stated. Which obviously, maybe the DM didn't transfer that skill over to mm, rope climbing. It does make was, me wonder what system Bory. they were using for sure. Mm, I did. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would count it. Right. I, maybe that. Maybe they just had a dick yeah. DM. I don't know. No, it comes down to that athletics or acrobatics, and we're not getting into this. This is mm. way too. I mean, it was <laughs> definitely, it was definitely athletics. I, I think would the think. players were yelling at the game master for making an overly powerful GMPC, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was the end of that. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, I, I have to throw in here. So in this final scene, what we have is the main boat they were on is sinking, sort of on some rocks. So Kelly, describe to me this: it's caught okay. on a rock on the on the lake floor, but mm. it's still sinking. Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, you, your reaction is appropriate. There is nothing about this scene that makes a lot of sense, um, especially the placement of the rocks, which I think are clearly cgi here like i'm looking at the rocks going like how did you miss those <laughs> like you had to have tried to get up on those and th- nobody was drunk Every- it was a dude driving like like it was like the cameraman guy was driving he could see everything in front of him but also the the rocks on the it was somehow they were going forward and the rocks hit the back mm-hmm. of the boat and crushed the back and then the back was going down the front was going up I don't even know. And also, so it's plot also, physics. Also, and, um, our cameraman uh, is nowhere to be found because also Paul Shear plays the cameraman. Yeah. Uh, a guy you might know from other films, but also is, runs a fantastic podcast called How Did This Get Made? Which they also uh, do reviews of uh, unbelievably bad movies, but not this one. Well, they don't do ones that they're involved in, uh, involved with. So that that task has been le- left to us. Um, right. And I guess they just thought his death was not important to show because he falls off the boat with Jerry O'Connell and uh, the other girl, and they just don't... We never see him again. We never see his death, or he never jumps back onto the boat. We just assume that that guy's dead. Uh, Well, (laughs) so my headcanon is he was the actual supervillain of the film. Mm -hmm. Um, He will be in the sequel when he creates a second fissure. Uh, He was actually down there breeding those... Because here's the thing about the cave, right? So besides about the idiocy of how these piranha are th- supposedly still alive after millennia. Collect- um, cannibalism, be- that's how. Because they've been eating each other. Wow. Okay, guys, it doesn't work. It, no, not unless, I mean, if they're growing that quickly, I we're all in trouble. I don't even know what to say. So, and Rich, then, you, you got to get this because, believe it or not, this is only the second dumbest theory of why things have lived in an isolated environment underground God. that we've had on Netflix and Kill. <laughs> okay. In All which right. we had Cowboys versus Dinosaurs, in which they blew up an underground cavern that had dinosaurs in it, and their blood had methane in it because that's what they breathed down in the cavern. That one was my fault. That one was definitely Travis's fault. <laughs> so, by that standard, Piranha 3D makes total sense to me. I mean, okay, yeah. you did set a new bar. That is for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. That, actually, that was not the movie that got me, uh, lost my privileges, uh, for picking movies, <laughs> oddly enough. <laughs> oh no. No, oh, no. Yeah, fuck You're gonna tell spawn. me. <laughs> Anyway, well, we're so talking- also, but the point, the point of being in the cave, the guy, the, 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 the guy swimming through the cave and he swims underneath a giant hole in the ceiling. Like there's light pouring down through this hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was not the hole that he swam the through. piranha, the piranha came out of. Right. Cause that right. was like, a, a. so I'm like, wait, where's this? What? There's like a hole. Is it like, I, I don't even know what's happening right now like where is this hole going to and why is there a giant hole here like it's another part of the lake i don't know i it why didn't they leave through this giant hole that's in the background like i don't know believe it or not i did not notice that probably because i was too busy trying to figure out is that diz from starship troopers in the other wetsuit (laughs) (laughs) and it is believe it or not which is right cool nice Um, anyway meanwhile back to the finale yeah so oh like like almost no step of this plan makes like any sense. Like no. th- the whole plan is to one get a rope and tie it to a boat 
and then swim underneath the other b- uh, boat, the sinking boat. Well, to we should mention, too, Kelly is trapped at this time. Yeah, right, Kelly, so Kelly, yeah. yeah, so Kelly's trapped, and Jake wants to get to her, but the only way to get to her is to get in the water and swim underneath it. So he takes a like a, a ski rope from the boat his mom's on, and at mom and Adam is on, ties it around himself, and goes under the water. But before he dives in the water with all the prana, he throws Jerry O'Connell's half-dead body into it. Because apparently the piranha, as judged by the massacre we just saw, only attack one person at a time. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so they throw him in there, so that's good. It's a good thing they figured that out. And then he goes in and he gets her, and then yeah, I take it from there. Because the rest of it was like, there's a flare involved and some gas. So, okay, so I'm going to break this down step mm. by step. And anyone feel free to jump in and correct me if they have any idea of how this does make sense. I don't even know if I could. So he grabs the line, swims underneath the boat in which to grab his girlfriend. And then hopefully uh, he turns on some propane tanks that are already underwater. Which I'm pretty th- sure do wa- through water pressure would also not work, but you know what? We're gonna skip right along past that. <laughs> Too much. Um, and he turns on the propane tanks, grabs the flare gun, uh, and uh, radios on the walkie-talkie that must be some sort of military-grade walkie-talkie because it is not shorted out during the swim. But whatever, uh, and is gonna radio to the to the boat, which is gonna grab them and 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 uh, you know pull them out. In which the boat has to turn on in order to do that. In which, why the hell was the boat not on before and just idling? But fine. Also, the they pull the our heroes outwards, even though the rope uh, pulling on the it p- wouldn't pull them straight out because it shows him swimming underneath the boat yeah, yeah. and on the railing. So really, it would really just bash them head first into oh, yeah. the boat and yep. and smash them. Uh, uh-huh. it, like so, I don't get how that like how that physics. And also, uh, he's got it wrapped around his chest, and he's got her. And then the boat's driving at one point. Like Adam's driving that boat at, at like thirty miles an hour, mm-hmm. like just tearing them through the water, underwater, like just tearing not ass. even at the surface. Like it just should have like cut that guy in half. Uh, and I mean, or pulled him out of the loose knotty liquid, but you know, and then, so he shoots or he shoots like he, he has the flare go off or he has the, the flare on well, the, now he's got like a flare and he ties the flare onto, what did he tie it onto? He tied it onto the walkie talkie and something else. Yeah. And he, he started a flare that was working underwater, which is okay. But then, and so the thing was slowly floating to the surface and all the, all the propane from the propane tanks. We're going up and filling the inside of the boat with this propane. And so theoretically, once the flare got to the surface, it would ignite the propane and the whole thing would explode. Mm-hmm. Right. Why? I don't know. But like why this was a plan of his. Because as they pull him out, like all almost all the piranha are after him immediately. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they're all like way away from the boat. But somehow the boat explodes and the shockwave kills... All the fish that were there. And it doesn't hurt them at all. But not them. Right. But not them, one. And number two, what happened to all the what happened to all the piranha at the massacre? It's kinda like the end of Mass Effect three, where the Citadel <laughs> DLC blows up and it only kills the Reapers for the red ending. I only see. it's just an explosion, so I don't get why it's discriminatory in an explosion murder. Also, right. I just don't think now, correct me if I'm wrong, because mm. I am not a scientist, that an a explosion, uh, even the shockwave, would kill something that far away from the boat. Yeah, if you were a seismologist, you <laughs> would Maybe know. if I was a seismologist, I would know that. Um, also, that's a lot of fucking propane on a boat. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. With the amount of explosion, like the explosion size of the boat, what was the propane for? That was like, a good question. No. Like, did yeah, they I not want to refill on propane for, like, the next year of driving that boat? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. They didn't even have, like, a barbecue on there or anything. And I say this because earlier on we saw a boat with a barbecue on it. Um, maybe it was the same boat and I just didn't even realize. Maybe. I don't know. The subtleties of the underlying plot. Maybe they actually um, were going around stealing propane to make their own barbecue. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the shockwave, for the fish that are near the boat, I'm okay with them dying. That's fine. But they, like, pulled so many of them a pretty far distance that we saw from the boat before the explosion even went off. And a shockwave can stun fish. Mm-hmm. It could stun them. Sure. Like, I, mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. And explosions that are underwater have a pretty rough wave. But they're, I mean, they're just like, oh, thank God, all the fish are dead. And I'm like, all the fish in the whole lake? Like, <laughs> uh... You what? And then, then there's the twist at the end where you think everybody makes it out alive. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, this is so great. Uh, what a great way to go out on because, of course, we get Christopher Lloyd back and just, oh god, my, oh god, no. I'm just, Literally phoning it in. Phoning in for performance. Oh god. <laughs> Marty, Marty. I t- tell you what, these fish, the, 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 there's no reproductive organs. The, the babies, the babies. Uh, right. To which Adam Scott is, of course, goes, babies. Huh. Huh. Well, I wonder where the adults are. Uh, then mid-sentence, a giant ass piranha jumps out of the water, eats the shit out of him. Bam. Credits. Credits roll. Yeah. Great so ending. So all, all the piranha we've seen have all been Im- like baby babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> That was the only way to end this movie. It is the rosebud of giant fish movies. I mean, if they're going to make us continue with the heroes for that long, at least they gave us something. Uh, It is the ending line of just like, this, of course, is the only way this classic film could end. It's just this great thing. Um, So, yeah, that was the spoiler section. Is there anything else we wanted to mention before we wrap this one up, guys? I don't know. I feel like we covered it. I feel like we did a great job. And I... And I feel great about we, it. I think we gave it three or four coats, actually, <laughs> of fake blood. Um, yeah. say, well, we had 75 gallons to spare. Oh, boy. Well, thank you once again, Rich, for joining us. This was absolutely fantastic. I regret nothing. I mean, just uh, think of it this way. If you ever come back on to Netflix and Kill, you've set the bar. You've set the bar. I can't wait for you to come back on. Uh, but we're only doing fish movies. Uh, so oh, that's... Don't make so me watch all these movies. Your, your options... No, 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 no. It's water movies for him. He can get any water movie. It doesn't your have to options... be fish related. Okay, so... Water. Yeah, fish related. So maybe but some James has, Cameron movies somebody, you can get in there. Someone has to die, though. Isn't that the point? Yeah, someone has yeah. to die. Someone has to die oh. on water. So, you know, maybe... Uh... You know what? I have to... I'm going to... A point of order. I think enough people died in this movie that I should get a, like, credit a one? for the few... A yes. One? You get a kill credit. <laughs> I get a kill credit for this one. Um... Thank you for inviting me on the show and making me watch this. He's never coming back, um, is he? Oh, I might come back if only to cleanse my palate. Um, we got to have Rich come back on the redemption, <laughs> the redemption arc. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not. It's not going to be Piranha 3 Double D that I can tell you right, right now. This is not happening. So. Well. I gotta say, I'm, I, I'm putting my foot down <laughs> into a lake of piranha. <laughs> into a lake of piranha. Well, th- thank you guys so much for sticking with us. Again, check out some of our back catalog on Netflix yeah. of Netflix and Kills on iTunes. <laughs> Make sure you go and check out Rich's stuff on the Whelm podcast, and of course, uh, all of his other works is his gaming stuff. It's it's. <laughs> Really great, and thank you again, Rich, for coming on. What and a, thank you guys. What, this was actually a ton of. The movie was terrible. The review was. A oh my lot god! Of fun. What, uh, thank awesome. you so such much. Such a fun time. Such a great time, Rich. I'm. I'm yeah, so elated. So I'm <laughs> so happy. You know. And uh, we're on a positive geek out, and we're, we're out. out. And also, I am not well. I, there's. If I, I don't know if I'm underwhelmed or overwhelmed, but I'm definitely not at the whelmed level. <laughs> I'm actually both with this movie. <laughs> It averages out. So then you are just whelmed. Stay whelmed, everyone.